So welcome back everyone, Mike here. It is a cold morning here in Pennsylvania. It's about 18 degrees, and although that's pretty cold, I would much rather it be like this than the rain and the slop and the mud that we had spring, summer, and fall this year. If it stays like this for a little bit, you can, you know, things freeze up, you can get out in the woods, and you can do some things without making a mess. But anyway, today we are gonna go down to the brick house. I have an excavator down there, and we're gonna kinda go over all the basic functions and how the controls work and just kind of go over a machine you know from front to back and top to bottom and the intent of this video is to kind of help anybody out there that may be looking to rent an excavator for the first time there are several types of people that watch our channel from what i can tell there's people like us that have been doing this stuff our whole lives and there's also people that may have just bought their first piece of property and this is all kind of new to them now first thing to keep in mind uh you know you can you know, have several compact tractors here backhoes they're fantastic. A, a backhoe on a tractor is very handy to have around the property. Putting in culvert pipes or running water lines or electric lines and you know you can do all sorts of work with that. But there is no comparison to a you know a backhoe on a tractor to a mini excavator or a compact excavator. They're just two totally different animals. So it's something that you want to keep in mind. Now for me you know I work a full-time job and I stay very busy. There's always something to do. I maintain our property I help take care of my mom's place. We have the, the brick house down there, and there's always something to do, and you're always busy. So even though I have a couple backhoes, there's times when I will rent an excavator, they're just that much faster. Uh, time is something that I don't have a lot of, so uh, if possible, I always try to get the right tool for the job. So keep that in mind. Although, you know, a backhoe on a tractor is very handy, it's no comparison all to an excavator. I consider, and I don't care what manufacturer it is out there, uh, backhoes on tractors are for like occasional use whereas an excavator is for getting in that thing and running it eight ten hours a day for years uh, they're just that's what they're made for specifically heavy-duty use but anyway we're gonna head down to the brick house now and I'll give you a look at this Bobcat E63 excavator and we'll go all over it thanks all right we're down here at the brick house this is the machine we're gonna be looking at today this is a Bobcat E63 excavator this machine weighs in just a little under 14,000 pounds. It's a rental unit. Came from Bobcat of Pittsburgh. They have offices in uh, Cranberry Township, Pennsylvania, Mount Pleasant, Meadowlands, Belmont, Ohio, Indiana, PA, and Waterford, PA. Now this is not a paid advertisement or anything like that. Uh, I've just dealt with them for a lot of years and they've always treated me very well. And uh, they're a good company. And so when I have that information, I like to share it. So if you're in any of those areas, check them out if you need something. So the basics, which I'm sure most of you already know, but we'll go over real quick. Obviously, that's your bucket right there. This is your stick. That is the boom right there. Now, although an excavator will rotate 360 degrees, there is a front and back to a machine like this. This is the front up here. Not just because the blade's here. This is what you want to look for. This is where your idler is. That's a smooth idler right there, front of the machine. Back of the machine, it's got this sprocket right here. These are your drive motors. That's the back of the machine. And the reason it's important to know that is this. It's recommended you wanna dig off the front of the machine. Now sure, with a machine like this, you can dig all sides, no problem at all. But say you're buying one of these and you wanna keep it for a very, very long time it's designed to dig off of this end on a machine this size with the smooth idlers in the front of the machine. If you were to dig off the back of the machine day in and day out, you would probably have an early failure on your uh, drive motors. That's just what I've heard, but it kind of makes sense, and they are designed to dig off the front. Now this machine's equipped with a thumb, which is just... As far as I'm concerned, if you rent one or buy one, you get a thumb. I mean, it's kind of like buying a cordless drill, you know, without any driver bits, if you don't get a thumb. 
So along with, you know, obviously rotating 360 degrees, this machine here, see these cylinders right here? You can get in, you know, close to houses or buildings or walls or whatever, and the boom will actually offset as well as, you know, spin 360 degrees on the house. I'll show you that here in a minute. Now say you're going to rent an excavator and you have a, uh, you know, a backhoe on your tractor and you think you're going to be all ready to run an excavator. Uh, there are some key differences. One is... You know, it could be the controls could be differently. Now this one here, uh, you can run it either way. See, there's two types of controls for running a backhoe or an excavator. Uh, one are ISO controls, you know, also known as excavator controls or John Deere controls. And the other are SAE controls, and also known as backhoe controls or CAT controls. And we'll go over that in a minute when we get in the cab. I prefer CAT controls. Uh, I can run both. The uh, RK tractors, they are, uh, they're the old, you know, the uh, ISO controls. But I do prefer CAT controls. It's just what I'm used to running. And on this machine here, you can switch it either way. Shows, they're calling it ISO or standard. All right, we're going to start this up and uh, start going over a few of the controls. This machine has 1,278 hours on it. First thing you want to do when you're ready to operate this machine, armrest will go down. When you're getting in or out of the machine, you'll pull up on this right here. So it's ready to run right now. As you can see the blade on this machine, very handy to have a blade on an excavator. The control for that is right here. Pull up or down. Pretty simple. Now a lot of these excavators will have angle blades and things like that. This one does not. I don't see too much of that on the bigger ones like this, but maybe they do. I'm, I'm not sure of that. Now to control your thumb on this machine, right here on this right joystick, close your thumb, open the thumb. To tram the machine, you got two pedals right here, left track, right track, and you can also use, you know, the hand levers on it as well. So if we go forward, push them both forward, want to go back, pull them both back. Turn left, you can go like that. Turn right, go like that. Not much to it. Alright, we're sitting in the cab. I have the camera to my left. You got these two joystick controls right here. Now this one over here on the left, the way this machine is set up right here, I can angle the boom to the left by pulling this button down right here. I can angle it to the right. By pushing that button forward. Back up. So I already showed you the uh, thumb controls on this, on the right hand joystick right here, and how to just swing the boom and keep the house in place. Next I'm going to show you, now we're on ISO controls right now. So on that one right there, if you lift up on this one, I'm on the right joystick right here, if you pull back on it, lift your boom up, push forward on it, Put your boom down. A 
left control, pull back, it'll bring your stick in, push it out, takes the stick out. Now, back to the right joystick control. Pull it in towards your leg and it will curl the bucket back. Push it away from your leg and it'll dump the bucket out. Left control, move to the left, the whole, machine, the whole house will swing to the left. Go to the right, the whole machine will go to the right. On this machine, the uh, pattern selector is right here on the outside. I have also seen them under the seat on some of them. But this one's right here on the side, real easy to change. So I switched the controls around. The only difference is on these uh, is the boom and the stick. Push this joystick forward. And it will extend the stick, raise the stick up. Pull it back, pulls your stick in. Left joystick control, move it to the left, swings the whole machine left. Move it to the right, swings the whole machine to the right. Pull back on the stick, lifts the boom up. Push forward on the stick, puts the boom down. The only difference between ISO controls and the standard, or SAE, I guess they call it, is the boom and the stick. Now we're gonna... All right, to kind of review what we talked about, a backhoe on a compact tractor is a very handy attachment to have around your property. However, I consider them to be sort of an occasional use thing. See, I'm not retired. I don't have all the time in the world. So when I need to move a lot of dirt in a hurry or dig a long deep line, I'll rent an excavator. And so you may find yourself in that situation. And if you do, a few things to keep in mind. There is a front and back to that machine. The front of the machine is where the smooth idler is. The back of the machine are where your drive motors are. You always want to be digging off the front of the machine. However, there is an exception to that. If you're running a machine that's like three tons or less, they recommend running with the blade in the back of the machine and all that does is help stabilize the machine when you're digging it's not going up and down up and down it's a lot smoother to run a real small one like that with the blade in the back set down on the ground so keep that in mind the other thing is you know what controls are you most familiar with play around with them a little bit whatever you feel comfortable with you can stick with that and like everything else i say just go smooth and steady if you've never run one before everybody has to learn sometime but you don't want to get out there ripping and tearing because you're going to get in trouble. And like everything else, you know, you want to know where your buried utilities are. You want to look for overhead power lines. Uh, one way you can get in trouble with these in a hurry is when you're clearing trees. I've done a lot of tree clearing with excavators. With that thumb, I mean, it is the ticket. It really is. But you have to be careful. You don't want to go real fast. It would be nothing, you know, to swing something through the cab of the machine or, or you know, things could end very badly. So just take it easy. But anyway, you know, if you find yourself needing to rent an excavator, I hope you stumbled upon this video and you find it helpful. And if so, please hit the like button, click subscribe, and share them with your friends. Thanks.